right, welcome everybody. Great having you here. We're drawing, we're painting in watercolor. We're gonna have an excellent time. We're gonna cover all the details we need to create this beautiful painting. We have um, a cell phone photograph we're gonna use to work from. This is a pub right near my house where I live. So I, can't, I went by there, took a photograph. We'll show you how you use your photograph to uh, use as reference material. We'll do the drawing. We'll do the, we'll mix the colors, show you all the colors you're gonna need for this. It's sort of a limited palette, not many colors. You can kind of see that it's sort of a, a limited palette here with the colors. I didn't go with a tremendous amount of uh, different mixes. So we're gonna cover all the details you need to get this done. A really fun painting. Um, it's basically two dimensions, so you're not gonna have uh, too much three-dimensional quality to it as far as the architectural drawings of this. Um, but we do have some nice angles and things that do give it, that does give it a nice quality of a three-dimensional uh, feel. And then some road, here's a road going back into the distance and some uh, sky in between the two buildings. So this does have a nice um, feeling of um, uh, three-dimensional quality, nice light. We're painting into the light, so we're going to describe how when you're painting into the light this way, the light's shining in front of us, the sun's rising behind these buildings, and we're getting the light this way, so we're making the buildings a little darker and the background a little lighter looking. So it looks like it's like a morning scene with the sun coming up behind these buildings. And we'll describe all these things to you here as we go. So let's not waste any time. Let's get started. All right, so we just saw the finished painting. We're going to get started. First thing I'd like to do is uh, maybe take a pre-cut mat. So we have a pre-cut mat here. We could place this on our paper. Uh, my paper's a little bit larger. Um, I just wanted to have a really good looking uh, working surface here um, while we're doing our painting. So I have the mat here and what we'll do is I'll move the phone just as long as I kind of see where I have to go with my mat. I have to go about here. So then that's fine. Then I move my phone out of the way for just a second and we have our subject matter of course on the phone. So we can use our phone for a great bit of um, information or for our, our painting. So now I have my four dots in all four corners of this pre-cut mat. Now I know uh, now I know I have to go larger than those four dots though because I want to make the painting a little larger than this opening. So when I drop this down and move it around on there I have a little bit of room to move it you know sideways here and there just a little bit and that might give us a little more um, comfortable um, feeling when we're when we're framing this painting if we decide we're going to frame it if it comes out really good. If not, we can always just put it in our folder or tack it up on the wall and uh, so forth. But let's uh, take these four dots and just take note that we need to make the painting a little bit larger. So let's just go about an inch in all directions and we should be fine. So I'll just take my ruler and go right around and go beyond about an inch in all directions approximately. You can measure it exact if you want or you just you kind of take your artist's eye and you say, okay, it's about an inch or three quarters of an inch or a half inch, a little bit beyond those dots that we made in the four corners. And then we just set our ruler down. And there we have it. Now we can put some tape down on the paper. That's another always a good thing to do. This way when we're done painting and we peel off the tape, it gives us a nice a crisp border around the painting, which kind of looks like it's been framed or matted for us. So it's, a, you know, just a great way to frame out your painting and it looks great when you lift up the tape at the end when we're done. So we just put four pieces of good masking tape on there, good artist tape. I use pro drafting tape. I like using the drafting tape that's, you know, the manila color like this. The color tapes are good too. They make some great color tapes, like painters, a professional painter's tape. But I'd rather have masking tape seems to be a little bit, or drafting tape seems to be a little bit uh, less distracting when I'm drawing and painting, I think. Haven't tested that theory, but I think it's, I just, I guess maybe I'm just used to this, uh, the drafting tape. All right, so we're in good shape. We have our um, rectangle taped out with some artist tape. We're larger than the pre-cut mat. 
And now we're ready to start our drawing, so I'll just bring our photograph here. This is a local bar uh, near my, my home. Great food there and uh, nice atmosphere. And let's let's create this here. Let's um, we'll ask ourselves a question. Um, do we want to minimize some of the things in this drawing? Like maybe we want to just have, I would say this, I'm going to try to keep it as close to the photograph as possible for the most part. So I will put in this house to the left, of course, and uh, the telephone pole. Uh, I might not put in the, I might put in one line, one um, communication line or something like that, just for, you know, effect to kind of show us that this is a communications pole and some communications lines, some power lines. Other than that, I won't make a, a lot of details with this, these lines here. And maybe I'll just zoom into the picture a little bit. You might want to do a screen capture if you want. I'll, let me zoom in a little bit. So we'll do a, a zoom in just so you can kind of see close up here. Like that. Okay, so that'll be the photograph. Again, you can do a screen capture. If you're not sure how to do a screen capture, you can always look that up on YouTube. All you really have to do is kind of get the um, make and model of your phone or your computer, and you just type that in, and you type in how to do a screen capture with a iPhone or with a Samsung phone, and maybe you put the, the model of your phone, like an iPhone 1 or 2 or 3 or 4, whatever it is, or 10 or 12. And, um, you know, or if you're on a computer, home computer, or a laptop or an iPad, all you just have to do is kind of type into YouTube the make and model of your electronic device, and then you just put in how to do a screenshot or how to do a screen capture. And then it'll give you the directions. Usually it's very simple. It's just like you got to press two buttons on the outside of your phone or your iPad, and it clicks and takes a picture of whatever's actually on your screen. So whatever's on your phone or your screen, usually, no matter what, whether it's a computer, a phone, an iPad, iPhone, Samsung phone, any kind of electronic device, laptop, there's always usually a way you can capture what's on your screen. Actually, there always is a way to do that. Most times, I think 90% of the time. So I think everyone should have that ability. You do a screen capture of this right here, and then you have it. And then you can just leave it on your phone and, and work along with it, just like we're going to do. So let's zoom back out, like so. And then we'll put our picture back up here. Okay, there we go. All right, let's start out again with our idea of, let's make this the pub here. Um, a little bit to the right and not quite right in the center. Let's kind of shift it over this way a little bit. A shift to the right is a little better than doing it right in the center. It kind of makes it look more interesting. So let me kind of get the basic idea here of, let's say we'll get the this, the actual rectangle of the building first. We leave some room over here for the street on the side and the sidewalk. But we're going to hug it pretty close to this over here. So we have our building like so. And I do a very light pencil sketch like that. And I think you can see that, that light pencil sketch. It should look pretty good. And then we have the bottom of the building coming across. And I think this looks pretty good about here. Like that. So I'll do a light sketch first, a light pencil sketch. Like that. And then there's a roof here, and then there's a chimney up here. that except I've uh, noticed right away if you make a little if you make an error no big deal you just I made the chimney too large on this here it's kind of quite thin and small this roof section's a little smaller there too but I think this is like this like that that's better
Okay, and then we'll start our roof. That's basically a triangle. So if we're looking at this, if we're looking at this for shapes, um, we're going for a triangle on the top. For the gable end of the roof like that and then basically a, a little bit of a rectangle it's not quite a square it's sort of like a rectangle like that's so kind of a square I guess a square would work that's pretty much a square I guess it might be more of a rectangle here I'm not quite hundred percent on that um, let me do this here we're going to do the bottom shed roof that's over here so that's basically a rectangle with a little bit of a flare out on these two ends with the roof. Okay, so that's basically a square and then another rectangle here, so nothing too difficult at this point. And then we have another two squares here for the windows, basically two squares here. And then those are divided in half again, like that, not a big deal. And across this way too, like that. And then another window up here, another rectangle up here with a divider in the middle. So you can kind of see that's the basic uh, shape of things and then the chimneys over here like that. And then another triangle within a triangle that gives us our trim around the... Uh... So that's basically what we're looking to do right here and then we'll do some of these verticals which are really nice to light like that. And then over here there's the sign for the pub. And we could just go up like this and like that. And make the pole like that. Then we have um, some furniture outside. And then we'll do the furniture and tables a little bit lightly, not too much detail on the bottom. And uh, sidewalk comes out here. So this is just basically a, a quick interpretation with some dark markers so you can kind of see the the um, nuts and bolts of it. And then up here we have this coming right down alongside the, the communications pole. So I'll make that a little bit wider like that. And then we have the other um, house next door. Like that. Actually, it stops there. It's about even here. And then we have another triangle up here, like that. So, and then we can just do some windows over here. And we'll just basically get a few things in there. Some, some shrubs, maybe over here a little bit. And I think that should be fine. So, that'll be kind of a part of the painting that's very subtle. We won't really do a lot of detail over here. We'll kind of leave this kind of very lightly painted, not much detail. The main interest is right here on the pub, and it's a little bit darker under here. So the there's dark, dark um, wood siding on this pub here, and the door is actually right here on the corner section of the uh, bu building. And then there's a couple windows over here, very um, uh, win windows here that are very close up to the uh, underside of that shed roof here. So this is the shed roof. Like that. That's basically it. So now we'll just kind of keep working on our pencil drawing here. And um, let's see. So we'll keep going here. This is okay. That is. And let's do the window up here. Like that and. There's some shadow under here. Okay, and then the windows are pretty close up to the bottom of this um, small trim area here at the bottom of the gable roof, gable end of the roof, and then we'll do this. And then over here. OK, 
Okay, two windows on each side. Um, we can make them a little more exacting, like these. Quite a bit of trim in between each of those windows. Um, then we have just below that, we have the shed roof. Okay, and it extends out here a little more. You can kind of see that in the photograph. Well, it's hard. You, well, you saw the close-up before, so I'm kind of trying to capture that. It, the, the shed roof over here kind of juts out beyond the building line here. So that's good. And then, so we have that. And we're going to keep this more simplified under here. It's kind of darker, so we're not going to get into a lot of details with that. And then we're going to go with our sidewalk. Our sidewalk's about about here. So I'm just going to go right along there. And this is the curb line here, the curb. And then there's the street right outside of this. Over here, the street's over here. Again, we're going to kind of make this minimal. And then over here, the sidewalk goes up like that. It might not go up that much, so let's... There's a car over here, so let me create a car over here. Okay, there's a car there. Okay, that's a car in the distance over here, and... Hmm. I'm going to maybe create a little bit. There's a tree back here in the far distance. So I'll just put that in. Another one here. And uh, let's see. Let's get this light in. This is the light post here is, starts about there then I'll just travel up like this and I'm going to try to keep it just the way it is in the Okay, so we have that light there, and then we have the chimney, and this up here, this looks good. And we, uh, over here we'll do this sign. Here again you can have Artist Liberty, but I think I'm going to stick with what's here. I'm not going to get fancy and try to uh, reconfigure uh, things. I just want to get the... Okay, so now the sign starts right at the top of the roof here. And it goes up about halfway on top of the window, halfway up uh, to the center section of the, of the window. And then it comes down this way. And it's pretty thin. It's on quite a bit of an angle. And then there's a round portion of the sign like that. The uh, design of the sign. And then we have... That's there. And then there's a wood seat. I think this is a seat here, a bench. And there's a couple of pilings here in front. Okay. And I think that looks pretty good. And then there's some more tables here. It's pretty dark over here. Uh, this is a painting that's into the light, so the light's behind this building shining towards us. So you can always create a light insignia just so you have that. So you know that the light is like this. Like this, and then the bulb is here. And that's more of a spotlight that's turned up towards us, facing us. So that tells us we're painting into the light. The light's facing us this way, shining this way. And that's um, 
going to be helpful. So now we know that we know where the shadows are going to are going to be in the painting for the most part. They're going to be in front of the structure, the pub, and then I'm just doing some very light lines for siding. There we go. And then this is vertical siding over here, and there is some there's some features that I know are there. So I think I'll, or I'm relatively I think there's a window over here. Maybe another window here. And we'll make this darker anyway. Again, the lights in the the lights behind the building shining uh, towards us. Now uh, we will create the building next to this. But before we do that, let's do this uh, telephone pole, communications pole. And this one's right in front. It's about a short uh, distance away from the side of the house, the pub. So I'll just do this. I'll just kind of make my line a little bit at a time. That kind of can be a good technique to get a straight line like that. It's pretty, pretty good. Usually works all right. You can kind of just go a little at a time like that. Almost like doing it a little bit. A hash line, a hash line, a hash line, a hash line. You can get a ruler if you want to use a ruler like this too. And just do it quick like that. That works as well. And it's on a little bit of an angle, which is good. I think it's better. Sometimes the things are a little bit on an angle or, you know, doesn't have to be perfectly straight, everything. So if it comes out a little bit on an angle, that's fine. And then we say, all right, the house next door here, and it starts a little bit under this section here. And then it goes back a little bit like that. And then it goes straight down here. And then it's dark in here. Not much to do there. That's pretty much some bushes and things over here but in the alleyway. A little bit over here. There's some things going on. Kind of, we don't have to worry about that. We're going to keep this subtle over here. And um, what I might do is I might take this. Actually, I have to leave this. Not, not that I have to, but I think I'm just going to stick with the game plan of using this size frame. So we have the pub here. Let's just do this house next door. And then up here, it's a little bit higher up this way. Like that. And then over here. The gable roof goes up this way. Trim goes down there. Okay, and then we have um, the windows. And we have a chimney over here. Okay, and then we have a window over here, pretty much in line with the chimney, it's a double window like that. And if we look here, it's higher up than over here, so I'm going to do that. And that's a double window there, and another double window down here. That's about a little bit higher than this. So I just get my lines. So I take my lines from here and I kind of hold my pencil up to the line. And I say the top of this window here is pretty much in line with the top of this roof here. For the most part, it might be a little higher. So I'll just do that. And then the foundations are about the same here. And then there's a bush over here. OK, 
Okay. Now, since I don't have the rest of this picture, I'm going to see... Let's take a break. I'm going to see... I did do a small video of this too. A quick video when I was driving by. So what I'm going to do is see if I can find the video. And this way I can see the rest of the structure on this side of the telephone pole. And then I can finish this um, house next to this our, our pub here. So that will be the um, thing to do right now because... I don't want to just uh, create, make something up, architecture especially, like homes and things like that. It takes a little bit more time. Uh, if I worked and designed homes as an architect, I could probably make something up and say, oh, I know what's going to be over here, maybe a doorway over there, another window. But since, you know, um, I don't have that talent or that expertise, I'm going to have to look and see if I can find a picture with this. I might even be able to do it with a... Um, software program on my computer and uh, type in the address of this location approximately and I can maybe see if I can find something but we have the bush here another bush here like this and let's take a break I'll be right back and I will hopefully have another picture that we can use to finish this house over here and then we can start painting Right, so I did find another picture. Here it is. I'll zoom in. And let's take a look. This is the actual house next to the pub. So we're going to draw another window uh, adjoining the other double window we just had for these two. And then we'll make an opening here for the... Um, Doorway, maybe a little bit of the opening for the doorway. I won't draw in that car, I don't believe. And then I'll put another window up top on this uh, peak here. Let's see how much of that peak we might have. Let's, all right, we have the drawing. Though. We have the uh, photograph though here, so I'll, I'll, you'll see that close up. There we go. And I'll zoom back out again like that. And we'll move our picture up there. Maybe I'll turn this up this way, like that. I'll put it over here and I'll finish the drawing. So this is actually a triple window. So I'm going to make this a triple window like this. <clears throat> Another one over here. Okay, so now we have that effect of the triple windows there. And uh, what else do we have? A doorway here, so that doorway is about a window width away, which is there. And there's steps going up into that doorway, like so. Like that. And that doorway is a bit higher than the windows. So we'll do that. Like that. That looks good. And then we're going to capture that window. This window up here at the peak, or the gable portion of the roof up here, is uh, pretty much aligned with this third window here. So we see my drawing is a little bit off. For some reason, I'm not sure how that is. I won't worry about that. I'm just going to take this and change it a little bit. I don't think anyone's going to see that difference there if I put the window up here like this. That should be fine. You can change things around once in a while. Step back and look at it. That's what I'm going to do right now after I, I put some of this siding here. Some of these lines across for the siding of the structure of the house. I will step back and look at it and just see how it looks, stepping back and looking at it from a distance. And I think it looks alright. We do have a different angle though. So the angle that we drew was from looking past this pub, looking back this way a little bit. So that's why we have some different angles here. 
but I think we're just for the fun of it. Let's leave it as is. I think it's good. Um, there's a door in here too. So I'm going to draw the door in here like so. That's the door, front entry door. And then there's another window over here like that. I think that's fine. All right, we were ready to start painting. So I'll set the phone back on the photograph. Like that. Okay, so we're ready to start painting. What I'll do is we'll paint this uh, a la prima. Essentially, I'm just going to start um, painting everything at one time. I would like to get the darks first. So I want to do the darker colors first, the darker tones. So I have my water in my glass here. I have a sponge to check off some water. And then I'm going to see if we can start going in and doing some darks. I'm going to work from the left and work right. Since I'm right-handed, I'll, I'll work this way. If you're left-handed, obviously, you would start your painting over here and get your darks in wherever they are on this section. And you work your way this way across. So let's get started here. I think, um, I, think I will do some cerulean blue. and some green, cerulean blue, green, All right, let's have fun here and let's enjoy this here. We're going to do uh, some gold, some yellow ochre. So I'm looking at the painting and or the photograph and saying to myself, what do I see there? I see yellow ochre, I see lizard and crimson, I see the blues and greens. Uh, there's some burnt umber here too, some darker browns, um, some greens, I'll uh, mix some greens up here, olive green, sap green, sap green actually, olive green over here. So I think these are some good colors that we'll get on the palette. I think we're going to keep it a simple color scheme. We're not going to go with too many colors. Let's kind of keep it with these colors we have here. And then let's uh, begin, we'll get some green and blue, and we'll, we'll get those in the windows. I said I was going to start with the d darker colors, but I think this would be all right. Um, I forgot to draw my center of my windows here. So these windows are essentially Pretty much like this, like triple windows. If you smudge with your hand, don't worry about it. And then let's get some darker brown in here. So I think darker brown under here looks good. We can touch up some of these windows with some white paint at the end of the process. This window up here is French ultramarine blue, maybe some burnt sienna. The window up top here is a little bit darker. And then there's some blue in that underneath. Like so. So I guess I'm getting in some of the medium to dark tones. And then we can go under here for this shadow. Like this. And under here too, there's a pretty good shadow. Let's do some uh, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber maybe a little bit. These shadows are pretty dark under there. And again, I'm doing the darker tonal values. And I'll just get that shadow into there. And then maybe a little bit of red. We'll do the chimney over here. 
It's kind of like a brick red. And if you have, uh, you know, you might want to use a smaller brush. I tend to try to use the largest brush I can, even to the point of it being maybe, you know, a little uncomfortable. For some reason, it kind of does look good when we kind of try to struggle with a larger brush. It, for some reason, it just, I don't know, it looks better sometimes than using a sm really small brush. So now I'm just going to take this and be kind of careful. I'm going to try to slide my hand. My working board is quite large, so I'm just sliding my hand down the board. I have another I have another tr about 8 to 12 inches down here of board that I'm working on, so I can just keep sliding my hand right down the board like this with the brush. Just like that. Okay, the telephone pole's done. That looks good. You can always add in a little bit of burnt sienna. Uh, somewhere along the line here if you want to kind of break up the like that you can always blot up a little bit of paint maybe one one blot of the paint maybe looks good it makes it look like there's some light maybe bouncing off the the pole and then we have um, let's see some more darks we let's go with um, some sap green French Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna. And we're just going to do some bushes over here. So I'm just going to sc scrub on some. And a couple of little up. scratch up a little bit with my fingernail just to you can always tap it a little bit uh, we could add a little bit of splashing so I get some extra water in there so sometimes splashing looks good like that gives things a little bit more of a um, look of like uh, leaves and things that looks pretty good. Maybe some more over here. Like that. Looks pretty good. Then we're going to go over here and uh, let's do some more uh, windows. And these are some uh, dark there, uh, some cerulean blue. Here, and I'm trying to get the uh, feel for this color, which is kind of like a cerulean blue, a little bit of greenish blue. And then you can always paint in that color. And then, if you want to darken up a spot, you could take a little bit of your darker paint and just kind of dab it in there while the paint's still wet. Sometimes you'll see darker bits of uh, shadow underneath the windows, like this. Alright, so we're having fun here, enjoying the process. Um, again, we're painting into the light, so there is light coming from the back, so we're going to add a wash to all these buildings to give it a good kind of darker tone. But right now, let's get the darkest darks we can see in. And so the window window panes are all right, coming along good so far. And maybe we'll do another chimney over here, some more of that burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of the um, alizarin and crimson. OK, 
Okay, we have that. Now, let's see here. Um, I see a little bit of a shadow under here. That. And this is dark over here too. Burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. Was there in crimson maybe? Burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. And then we'll make this dark area over here. I recall this being pretty dark in here. So I'm just going to cover that whole interior doorway there darker. Then what we could do is, sometimes it's a fun technique, if you want to like just cover a whole area with paint and then blot out an area, let's say we want to blot in that door that's a little bit lighter color, like a white, it's a white color door inside this area here, this little um, foyer area. You can take a piece of um, um, paper towel and you fold it into a rectangle, like a door, you know, a door size, similar to the door size that we, we drew in there. And if you have to make it smaller, just try to get it approximately the size. And then you fold it over and you make it into like a rectangle, and then we just take it and then place it on the paper and then just press it down. Good. And then lift it up. And there we have it. So now we have that door in there, a perfect tone. It's a little bit um, it's not quite as dark as the background here, but it is a white door in there, so you can kind of see how you can get a, almost like you can, instead of letting it dry and painting around this door, you could do something like that, just lift up a little bit of paint, and uh, you can get the same kind of effect. And uh, I remember there were stairs here, so I'm going to paint the stairs here, so that's going to be like this. And I won't take a tremendous amount of time to do that. Let me just... I'll let that dry like that. And there was a window in there too. You could take another paper bit of paper towel, fold it up, press it down, lift it up, and that's our window there. And then we take some darker paint, and then just go underneath it a little bit, and around it like that. Maybe a little blue in there. A little bit of the uh, alizarin crimson. Try to mix it up a little bit. Okay. Maybe a little bit of color too on these steps. A little bit here and there. Mix up the color a little bit. And I think we're working pretty good here. Um, another bit of cerulean blue up here for this window. darker up there and you can kind of see I'm not going for perfection here I, I just think sometimes paintings like this you, you have a good time have fun just getting in the overall sense of things the darks and the lights we're starting with more of the darker uh, tonal values as you can see the darker colors um, shadows like this and um, I think next we're going to go with the underside here. So burnt sienna, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. That's kind of like our really good dark mix. And we'll just go under here and just start doing our dark paint on the siding, the wood siding on this. I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave that white uh, pole for the sign right there.
and I'm just going to keep working the colors, mix up the colors a little bit. I don't want to go all one color. Let's mix up some reds, some browns, maybe a little cerulean blue in there too. Warm and cool. So we don't have everything looking all the same. There we go. I'll go over that. I'm going to keep this all pretty much dark over here. I'll spin around my brush this way. Like that. And I think I'll do that. And there, those posts. The, uh, <clears throat> the bollards that are on the sidewalk there, they're pretty much a darker tone, but I'll go around them for right now. And like that. So I think this was a little darker. I'll make some darker darks here for a window under here. Like that. And I think there's another dark or window over here. Like that. Then I might lighten up this area here. There's a doorway there, so you can always take some more paper towel and just gently lift up the paper, uh, the paint, and we have a little bit of a change maybe in color and tonal value, just so we kind of have a feeling for the, the color change maybe a little bit, the tonal value change, the shadowing, and Perfect time for a break. Let's take another break. Um, it's always good to work for a while, maybe 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, and then we take a break. And then once we have that nice rest, we come back in 15 minutes and we look and go, oh yeah, I can see where I'm kind of at now. I'm got mo I have most of those darker tonal values in the painting pretty much in for the most part. And now I'm going to do lighter washes on both of the buildings, the uh, pub and the house. And then I have to do the sign. I have a few more details to do, but and then maybe the sidewalk and the street, that's going to be kind of simple. We're going to give that a like a, a light wash, but nothing too you know fancy with that. And I think we're pretty much getting near the completion point here. So let's um, take another break and we'll come back in five, ten minutes. And I always mention if you like this painting and you like the artwork that's on this channel, the simplest thing to do is if you subscribe on the right hand side below, this way you stay in touch with what we're doing all the time. You'll always see the, the new paintings that we're creating on my webs on my YouTube channel all the time. So you can just kind of peruse through the new ones coming out. And if you like them, you're going to click on them, obviously, and work along with us here. Or if you just like to watch, that's fine, too. A lot of people like just to watch for fun, the painting process and drawing and all the fun things with watercolor. So um, hope you're having fun so far, and I hope you will subscribe so you, you stay in touch. And um, here on YouTube, and um, we're going to come back in just a minute, and we'll uh, get started again. Okay, we're back, and we're going to continue here, finishing up some of the details of this painting. I think we're getting close to completing it. Um, let's see, we have um, a couple more darker sections I think we should probably complete. I think the roof here. Uh, the shed roof that's right over the top here. This is a little bit of a darker color. It's kind of got a greenish um, brown. So I'm going to go with like a, a, green, a greenish brown color with a little bit of the cerulean blue. And brown and green. And I think that looks a little more blue. I think might look good. And then I'll 
see how this looks. I think a little more blue. And I'm going to paint around that. And I'll go right across, like so, like that. good so we have the shadow under there good um, this up here is kind of darker darks that's like a dark blue like that. and there tends to be a couple of darker I don't know what's this is steel back here there might be some interesting uh, fencing or something back here so I'm just going to leave that a little dark there and then uh, I would say I'm going to probably go with my needlepoint brush and get some darker darks over here by the sign so the sign I'll start to do the sign now There's a little design around the sign. And then uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, Okay, well, we have that completed the sign, and I think I'll go with um, the background now in the sky. So now I'm going to take the um, palette. I'm going to try to mix a uh, for the sky a blue, cerulean blue, maybe a little bit of cobalt blue and cerulean blue. Let's see if we can get a sky wash in here. And I'm just going to work my way from the left to the right doing the sky wash and I'm just going to make sure I and crimson in there. And then if you have too much alizarin and crimson you can kind of blot up some paint and then you go back in and get some cerulean blue. And I paint right up to the edge of the roof. And then I might go with a little bit of um, a little bit of the reddish orange toward this uh, par portion of the painting over here. And these colors are pretty pretty good. I I'm seeing purple and uh, blue and purple in the sky over here. Um, maybe a little bit of um, raw sienna. So I just added in some raw sienna. It seems like it's a, a sun, well it's a sunrise kind of, it's early in the morning this picture I took. So 
the sky is actually the sun's rising over on the other side of the building. And actually these are not quite white. The trim around the the house is actually a little darker here. So we can capture that. Same with this. Okay. All right, so we're doing pretty well with the colors of the sky. I'll blot up a little bit here, and I think we're going to do the uh, foreground this, uh, the same, close to the same. Let's use lots of uh, yellow ochre, a little bit of green in there. So I think the green, that's going to be our street, like that. So I'm just going to go right across the street like so where the uh, street is. Then um, I can blot up some more paint quickly and then I add some yellow raw sienna. And that's more light. Like this. And then what we could do is to lighten this up here where the sidewalk is. You can always take some paper towel again, create like a rectangle with it, and then you could just lift up some paint on the sidewalk areas to give it more of a little bit of light quickly so that it doesn't... And then we can go back in quick with some of that gold again, make it a little darker in the street area here. Even a little bit of green in there too, that darker green. So that's going to be our street color there, a little bit of green and gold and blue. And then uh, the curbing is, we're going to let this dry and then we'll do the curb, which has a shadow. So we'll do that next. And then we will create our bollards here like that there's one more over here I think okay so we have our bollards in and um, I'm going to empty my water quick Fresh, clean water. And then we will add in some gold, a touch of uh, gold and uh, raw sienna, um, lizard and crimson raw sienna, a touch of the green. Let's get this uh, covered here. Okay, that looks good. A good wash over the top of this. This building is darker. It's more of a sand color. So let's get some more of the same colors like that. And then we'll add in some brown. I think. Of... Touch of blue. Kind of a sand color. That looks pretty good. A little more uh, yellow, maybe a touch more of the brown, and that looks good. And I won't get too worried about that if I go over a spot, I can just lift it up quick. 
that. I'm going to keep this side over here kind of subdued. So I'm not going to have any highlights or anything over on this side for the most part. I'm going to go right over the windows with my wash like that. Same thing here, right along there. So that looks all right, and I think a few more details than we are going to be fine. Everything will look good. I put a little darker wash under there. I think this should be darker too. And if you go over a line or two, don't worry about it. Again, this is we're having fun here. This is like a practice run, let's say. You're doing a small composition, kind of working some details, getting used to the brush, the paints. For this type of a painting, if you don't do a lot of these uh, street type, type scenes, well then, this is the perfect chance where you get to practice on them and uh, having a good time with it. Um, this one seems like a fun, fun one to do. It's enjoyable, relaxing. And then I'll do this here. I'll give that a cover of wash. Do a glazing over the top of that there. So we did say we wanted to kind of mellow this area out over here on this house over here to the left because this is really our focal point, the pub. So we're going to let this dry. We'll come back in about 15 minutes. You can use a blow dryer to dry this off at this point because there's quite a bit of washes on here. We did a lot of washes to the paper, uh, a lot of water, you know, quite a bit of water on the uh, washes here. So you want to either blow dry this or let it dry for an hour or two, and then we'll come back and finish up the details. So I'm going to use a blow dryer uh, while I turn off my camera, and then we'll uh, come back in and finish up on the details. And I always mention, um, I have a new book. It's called Watercolor Methods for Success. I'm hoping you might decide to pick it up. It's really fantastic. It has great architecture. This is a gorgeous city scene here, right on the cover. One of my favorite paintings I've, I've created in the last four, three or four years. And uh, there's, you know, more struck. We have a beautiful um, uh, country store here, uh, lighthouses, figures, and we have tons of great paintings, even figure painting, tons of uh, beautiful uh, city scenes with oceans, lighthouses. We have two, three lighthouses. Country scenes, again, beautiful shore scenes here, tons of seascapes, flowers, tons of flowers in there. So if, if you like flower paintings, there's a lot of flower paintings in here. Still life, practicing still life when you're in the beginning of the book, getting started. All kinds of interesting brush strokes that you can practice and work on to get your uh, painterly skills uh, strong as you keep going. I cover all my material my materials, my paints, my palette, my uh, palettes. I have numerous palettes, pe brushes, pencils. I cover all of the basics of uh, watercolor when you're starting out, learning the basics of just, you know, simple um, tonal value, which is the darks and lights in your paintings. You can see here we have a lot of darks and lights in this painting. So I cover a lot of dif different information, great, you know, all the supplies and, again, art tools that I use. So this is a great resource for you. So if you really enjoy my artwork, this is great. It's uh, I'll leave a link in this video for Amazon. You just go to Amazon, click on the link, and you'll see the book there. And if you'd like to pick it up, you'll have a great um, kind of it's um, all of my work, all of my gear, everything in one location. And you have literally years and years of fun practicing all these paintings because there's literally just oodles of paintings in this book. All right, so... Let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back. 
Okay, we're finishing up with our details. Let's get uh, back into the painting here. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, I think, is um, I'll do this light post here. And that's going to be our French ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And there's a couple ways of doing it. I think this is a pretty good way. I just like to kind of slide my hand up on the paper. Slowly. Like that. And then I can do the rest like this. Curve that around. And like that. And then this part here is kind of around it. And I'll just pick up a little bit of like a lighter wash, nothing extremely dark for the bulb, like that. And then I'll get some medium tonal values, blues and greens is fine. And maybe I'll get some trees over here, some tree branches. And Just an indication of some trees here across the across the road. Doesn't have to be too. You can always um, take a tissue and blot blot a little bit. Just to lighten up a little bit, and just a couple of flicks of the brush here and there, just to get some of the. Like that, that's across the road. And I'll do one more like that. Make this one a little darker, maybe. And I'll make that a little bit taller, like that. Just to have that one a little bit more kind of framing up the side of the painting. And then we can take some of these dark darks and you can get in some of those details maybe that we didn't get before, like the cap here on the chimney, like that. And this one over here too has a cap over here. And then there's another pipe on the roof here. And put a little pipe on the roof. A little couple details here and there go a long way. This is a little bit of a darker dark over here on the edge of the roof, like that. That looks pretty good. And maybe a couple shadow lines for a little bit of a darker dark here and there. We get in a few shadow lines, we can clean up this uh, couple of spots over here. We can add a little bit of color. I just want to add a little bit of color to the to the paper where that. Um, sign is and then there's this orangey uh, kind of like a um, looks like a barrel might be a barrel or it might be a seat like a um, something I'm trying to think it looks like a uh, like a bench I think it's a bench and we'll put a little bit of dark underneath the bottom ed edge of the and lift up some of that there and then just add a little darker dark under there that. And I like to add a little bit of darker, maybe just a touch of shadowing underneath some of the it's a little bit of a shadow there under the light and there's maybe a shadow here too. It's hard to tell. Um, yeah, there's some very subtle shadows here and there.
So we could add some subtle sh shadows. Like that. There's some... I think this is looking pretty good. So you see how we just added a little bit of detail here and there toward the end of the painting now and we made sure we blow, we did a blow dry, quick blow dry of all of the painting so all the paper was dry. And then we can go in and do these lights and signs and little the trees over here. You can do all those things and it won't be a problem. You can have a an easy time of it. Um, I think sometimes it's a little bit tougher if you're trying to paint on damp paper. That can really give you um, some agita. And I'll do a little bit of uh, finger tapping here for these trees over here. Just a little bit of some little bit of indication of some leaves and things. And if you oversplash, you can dab up with a tissue. And um, I think this looks pretty good. Uh, we could add a little more dark under here. That looks a little better with a little more shadow over here. And then I think we can also, just for the few spots we might have gone over some details, um, I think here too we want to uh, let's see here I have some titanium white with a little bit of uh, uh, yellow ochre so I put a little bit of yellow ochre into the top of the titanium white paint just a tiny bit of yellow ochre to kind of give it a golden like um, a, uh, a little bit of a warm kind of tone to the white paint. And then what I'd like to do is we can do a couple details. Something I think we maybe like that. So a couple of the windows, maybe I'll leave this subtle over here. I don't want to make anything too. So I'll do these over here. And I think that looks pretty good. Some subtle. A couple things that you add a little bit of like sparkles of light here and there with this with the titanium white and a little bit of yellow ochre in there. And you can really, really I covered over the trim on the uh, roof. So now I'm going to try to recapture that. Now I won't do it everywhere. Try to like that. See that looks better. It kind of brings a little bit of light into the picture. So you might look around and say, what are a few things I can do that might make things a little bit better as far as the light? So this I think we could do a little that looks better like that. This too. This is another. And this as well. Maybe there's a sparkle of light up here, too, on the light, like that. Maybe there's something up there, too. A few little spots here and there, and it can really go a long way. We can clean up a couple spots down here for the windows. And the sign too, we can make a little. All right, I think we have uh, we've gotten just those few touches of details here and there that really go a long way. Uh, another thing too we could do is um, a little bit of 
This needle point brush too is great for details on a smaller painting like this. We did mention that we maybe we could do a couple um, pegs here on the pole. These are something when you we live uh, in an area in our like in New Jersey where there's a lot of telephone poles and communication lines uh, above ground. So these are very like interesting. If you see telephone poles and communications equipment and things like that, it's very natural to see that where I live uh, in my uh, neck of the woods here. So um, if I put those few little small details there, that looks good. Somebody that's from this area in New Jersey in the United States will recognize it immediately. It'll kind of resonate with them and they'll feel like it's, um, you know, looks good and looks natural and everything makes the painting uh, a little better. And then here we could do another bit of um, shadowing here on the curb area like this. So you can do it a couple, you can You, know, you can fill it in like that, or you can just take the brush and go across like this. And that's got a little bit of a warmer feel to it. There a little bit, so I'll add a little bit of orange. A little bit of red too, a little bit of red. And then a little bit of sidewalk lines like this. And we keep it really subtle over here on the street over here just like that all right we have a completed painting let's peel off the tape see how it looks and again when you go to the beginning of the video you'll see the finished um, painting course I'll have it zoomed in so you can see it a little better but right now I think we're in great shape we got everything completed nicely peel off our tape we can put a um, mat pre-cut mat over this hope you enjoyed this and had a lot of fun painting this and uh, drawing this we'll see you on the next video and again happy painting enjoy the watercolor journey and uh, we'll be back before you know it